Hello, and welcome to our presentation, 120 Years of Olympic History, Analysis and Insights with Python. My name is Mike Dunbar, and I am presenting this with my teammate, Monsi Sethi. The modern Olympic Games have been going on for 120 years, from the first one in Athens in 1896 to the most recent one in Rio in 2016. The objectives of this data analysis will be to go over our data set, discuss the pre-processing cleaning steps we took, go over the structure for our data and how we use that for our presentation and analysis, talk through some of the descriptive statistics, go over the observations that we saw when reviewing our data, discuss our regression analyses with future forecasts, and go over some of our animated visuals. To get started with the data analysis, we obtained the needed data files. So the first one was Olympics data that was obtained from the Kaggle website, open to the public. And next was GDP data, which was procured from the World Bank webpage. And as part of any analysis uh, exercise, we also looked at the data structure and the distribution of a variety of quantitative variables. As, uh, as part of our exploratory data analysis, uh, such as uh, what would be the class of the variable and uh, if there are any missing values and so on. As for the GDP data, uh, example would be that initial extra information uh, above the column names that was removed and then data was reshaped to facilitate its merge with the other files. And uh, for Olympics data, there were some duplicate rows that were removed. And uh, similarly, NAs and unnamed rows were eliminated as well. And depending upon the need, uh, zero for medal count was converted to no medals. Uh, in all, overall, three files were used. Athletes that had all the athletic data, such as host city, name, height, sports of participation, and so on for the uh, participants. As for NOC, it mainly contained the country data. And as for GDP, as the name indicates, GDP across different years. And only the columns that were being analyzed were retained. Our regression analysis compared a country's GDP and how that would relate to medal winnings. As we were merging the two data sets together, we need to take a look at differences between the two and make sure the duplicative data wasn't going to impact our analysis. One of the things that we noticed were the country names between the two data sets. An example of a mismatch was between the countries of St. Kitts. In our Olympic data, St. Kitts has the Saint spelled out S-A-I-N-T, while in the GDP data set is abbreviated with S-T period. We picked one, and in this case, we stuck with our Olympic data, S-A-I-N-T, and made sure that the other GDP data set matched the same. Interestingly enough, in the GDP data, some of the countries were named low-income countries. Since we did not know what those countries were, they were dropped. In our analysis, we separated winter and summer Olympics from each other because different countries ex excel at different sports and didn't want to have any sort of biases between our analyses. In our regression analysis, we only considered data from 1980 to 2016. Our analytical and data manipulation packages that we use from Python were NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Scikit-learn. For plotting graphs, we use Seaborn and Plotly. For our animation representing countries with metal winds on a world map, we used PyConvert and Plotly Express. Now we will move into our exploratory data analysis. We begin our exploratory data analysis by looking at the age distribution of participants from the Summer Games. The mean age of an athlete in the Summer Games was 22 and a half years old, with the IQR of individuals falling between the ranges of 21 and 28 years of age. This is not surprising considering most younger people tend to excel at sports in this age range. The youngest athlete was 10 and the oldest was 97. 
These unexpected results at the extremes of the age will be explored in a minute. Taking a closer look at the individuals that actually won awards based on their age and gender, we can see, like the participants, the IQR of winners tend to be in their 20s. Looking at that distribution in the box plot, we also see that most athletes that are younger win more than older athletes, and those older athletes skew the data to the right. The differences in medal winning between male and female participants is roughly the same. So let's take a closer look at how the young and the old did in the Olympics. We have it broken out just with gold medal winners to keep things simple. Athletes 15 and younger displayed on the upper right with the horizontal bar chart were primarily female and participated in cardiovascular events such as gymnastics and swimming. Athletes 15 and older were primarily male and engaged in lower cardiovascular events such as archery and shooting. If you look on the bottom of the gold medal distribution for athletes 15 and older, you'll see two events, roke and croquet. So what is roke and what is, what is roke? Well, roke is a version of croquet that is played on a hard surface. I was surprised to see not only roque but croquet as an event. So I want to figure out, are these still events that, are par that participants do in our modern Olympics? The count bar chart on the upper right shows that in 1900, they played croquet, and in 1904, they played roque. Since then, they've been discontinued. A photo on the bottom hand right shows a picture from the 1904 games of participants playing roke. Over the years, the top five medal winning countries have been the United States, Soviet Union, Germany, Great Britain, and France. Taking a look at the interactive graphic using Plotly graph objects, we can see that if you highlight over the section, you will see how many medals each country has won. Taking a look at the distribution of physical attributes, the height of all athletes, your mean is around 175 centimeters, while the weight of all athletes is around 71 kilograms. Looking at the physical attributes over time, you can see that the weight has remained consistent. However, as you, as you move up the years throughout the Olympic cycle, you can see that the height is slowly increasing. For medals awarded, we're gonna take a look at how the, which medal each gender had won and how tall they were. For men, the spread around the medal winners is around 180 centimeters, and for women, it's around 170. Looking at this, there appears to be no observable advantage that athlete height trans into more medal wins. As far as weight distribution goes for medal winners, the men had an average range around 80 kilograms, while the women had a spread around 60 kilograms. Similar to the height distribution, it doesn't appear that there's a, any sort of advantage between weight and medals won. Also, taking a look at the range of weights between men and women, that's fairly consistent across medals. For the Summer Olympics, we look at participation for all athletes and can see that over time, both male and female participation increases. For Winter Olympics, it's the same thing. Something interesting to see is the male and female participation in the, uh, for the U.S. in 1904. This year, the Olympics were held in St. Louis, so the sudden bump was due to the available athletes being in that host country. Male and female participation with the Winter Olympics is more inconsistent, again, increasing every Olympic game. To represent distribution of medals across different countries, over the years, we decided to have an animation utilizing Plotly and PyConvert 
uh, pie convert package helps get the latitude longitude and those kind of items to be able to plot this world map so here i chose to have the data represented from 1980 to 2016 and size of the circle here or the bubble represents the number of medals won so the bigger the size the more is the number of medals and different continents are represented by different colors so let me play it here so if you can see uh, most of the countries bagging much of the medals across the years have been limited to US and some places in Europe, Australia and so on. Moving forward, I would go over the modeling data and the analysis that was performed. We were interested to dwell into relationship between medal tally and the GDP data because common sense dictates that uh, the higher the GDP, the more would be resources uh, at disposal for any particular country and the higher the chances of bagging more number of medals. So we plotted uh, counts versus GDP using uh, Seaborn, which also uh, shows here on top and on the right side the distribution of all, both these variables. So you can see on first glance, it seems like there is a linear correlation between the two variables and also that the distribution of counts and GDP is skewed. To decipher meaningful insights, it's important to have the appropriate model selected. So I started with examining different models given that the medal tally and GDP for which we are trying to find a relationship, both uh, variables tend to be skewed. So I examined a uh, linear regression model, polynomial regression model, and then logarithmic regression was done as well. And as you see here, uh, I transformed the GDP into log scale and then I also tried log log transformation for both the variables uh, and pro the provided results show here that the optimal correlation and R scale values could be obtained from the linear regression model. So that's what I chose to go with for further analysis. Next, I decided to forecast metal tally based on the GDP. Originally, the Olympics were supposed to be held in 2020, so that's what I tried to work with. And to be able to make predictions of medals, uh, first and foremost, GDP needed to be predicted first. And that's what I started with. And for forecasting GDP for 2020, I performed linear reg uh, regression between GDP and year. And there was a strong relationship between GDP and year. Uh, for US as expected and as shown in the graph here. Similarly, to get uh, GDP for 2020 for other countries, I ran linear regression in loop and examined some of them to make sure that they are as valid as it is for US with a high correlation. So next step was to make use of the predicted GDP for 2020 to estimate the number of medals for the countries that have participated in the past. And you can see here in this table, it lists out the top ranked countries for year 2016, their medal counts, and then also the predicted medal count based on the predicted GDP. And just to remind you, these uh, numbers here reflect the GDP, which happens to be in USD trillions. Okay, so here it reflects that US team is still expected to lead the medal tally in 2020 with uh, the first rank. And then uh, both Germany and UK, they are forecasted to see a decline in the medal count in spite of uh, an increase in forecasted GDP, which could be due to the negative correlation between medals and GDP. And as for Japan, it's uh, forecasted to have double the number of medals uh, than compared to 2016. As for future possible work, uh, we could look at uh, multiple other factors such as location of Olympics. We all know home advantage does uh, help in winning more so than other countries. And then total team participation could also be looked for from each country. 
and then separate out the types of sports, uh, the individual sports versus the team one, and then uh, more so than GDP, annual budget allotted for sports for each country might be more useful of a, a f factor to consider, and then country population. Uh, time series forecasting could also have been performed for forecasting GDP or we could have obtained the forecasted value from financial institution to be used here. And then effect of COVID hasn't been considered here and the fact that GDP uh, and the fact that the Olympics could not be there for held this year. And here are the references listed that are used in our analysis. And with that, I would like to thank our faculty and as well as my collaborator, Mike Dunbar.